Hello there, Kedra here is a DM for Idscape Games. I've been a dungeon master for ages and realized that it might be time to pass on some of my knowledge and experiences to help others join the crazy world of being the dungeon master. So diving right in, for our first session, we're going to be going over some guidelines that aren't quite included in the 5e DMG to help you get started. Now, bear with me. It can be a lot of info, but you'll be glad to have it. Greetings, DMs, players, murder hobos, and any others interested in learning more about Dungeons & Dragons. Welcome to Idscape Games, tips, tricks, and tutorials. Here we will be discussing ideas, theories, and good practices for practical, and fun, DM use in the everyday D&D campaign. Now, while I'll be sharing a lot of information that I feel will be helpful to know, I also want to hear from you. What are you interested in learning more about? What challenges have you come across? Do you have any guidelines that you use at your tables that might be helpful to other DMs to create a better game experience? Let's create a community support system together so we can bring out the best in the game. Check out the links to join our Discord server. D&D is filled with decades of lore and world building, as well as adventure as far as the eye can see. With its growth came the knowledge and experience of your friendly local dungeon master. With great knowledge comes great responsibility. I know I've heard that somewhere before. And in this case, the only source of certain information. We can see a stark contrast in that focus simply by looking at the second ed AD&D Dungeon Master's Guide against the current fifth ed version. The earlier version of the DMG focuses heavily on how to deal with the rules, and the current version speaks volumes on world creation. Not that that's a bad thing. Those who have those old dusty tomes of knowledge are blessed with the best of both worlds. However, with the explosion of D&D into the mainstream, the pool of DMs has risen exponentially, which has had an inverse action of driving a sharp downturn in the amount of experience new players and DMs have under their belt. Earlier editions of the game included such notes as, If you can't figure it out, make it up, by Zeb Cook. We can see that taken to heart by the plethora of official material that came out with 3 and 3.5 and even more so in the innovation that's taken off with 5th ed, between the standard open gaming license, coupled with the extended version through the dmsguild.com. But as a new dungeon master with a smaller selection of current official material that is built upon a legacy of content, where does the new DM start? How do we go about bridging that gap? Let's go over some initial premises that new DMs should think about. These aren't in any particular order, they're just helpful guidelines. First, reference materials. When starting out, make sure to have the base books handy to verify the rules. You do need them. Specifically, I'm referring to the PHP, DMG, and the Monster Manual. Links in the description below if you're missing any of these. Being a good DM is more than just knowing the rules, as those can often easily be referenced. It requires a bit of theatrical flair, dramatic timing, and a dash of improvisation. And a hand or two. <laughs> Even now, with decades of being both a player and a DM, I adhere to this. I tend to know my characters well, the basics well, and whatever monsters I plan to run. Conversely, your players will come to understand facets of their characters that, unless you've played that type of character, you may not think of. And that's okay. One of the best parts of the game as the DM is having your players come up with stuff that, well, you haven't really considered, but also makes for something interesting and epic to bring to your storyline. may also scare the hell out of you. Second, improvisation. Don't be afraid to change things on the fly. Trust me, I'm doing that with this video every single time. Now, this doesn't mean that the skeleton that your players are fighting all of a sudden transforms into a giant black ancient dragon that can e easily TPK them with a single use of its breath weapon. What this does mean is giving your players interesting surprises. Now, some of you may have seen this in action during episode one of my arachnophobia party. You can check that out right over here on the side. You know where the button's at. The player's wagons were stolen in the dead of the night while they were sleeping, due to one of the party members falling asleep on watch. Initially, I'd planned this to be just another group of kobolds for the players to track down and eliminate, thus upping the amount of the bounty that they would be rewarded. However, I had plans to hit them in the fields later in the mission, and wanted to get them thinking about their characters and the actions that they take. It's a really good thing for the DM to do. So, the players snuck up to ambush the cart thieves. They were all conveniently sleeping in their bedrolls, with their covers pulled up over their heads, making sleeping sounds that one wouldn't intuitively think come from kobolds. I mean, really, me, 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 does not sound like a kobold. 
Massacring a small band of halfling thieves, some of the party members believed themselves to be justified. Others were shocked by the horror of what they had just done. Fourteen episodes in currently, and the party continues to ponder if they're the good guys or strictly murder hobos. Only time will tell. Third, characterization. You don't have to use funny voices. Now, if you've seen any of the arachnophobia shenanigans, you know that I attempt to do this. Sometimes good, sometimes absurd, like totally dude, and other times it just sounds like me. But it's not required for a good game. Many of the alternate voices that I've been using throughout the years have either been my own characters or NPCs that I've just had for a long time. My NPC shopkeeper Habib has been with me since I was a teenager, and he's still a fan favorite. Voices by no means are required, and as an early DM I opted for a more bookish style of audio cues. Things such as Lord Stansberry furrows his brow and begins to angrily berate you saying yada yada yada. You get the point. And then you just kind of continue into the speech of Stanberry. This lets the players know which character they were talking to without having to voice the Lord any different than his high priestess. And is an option that the players can latch onto just due to having read or listened to audiobooks. Fourth, balance as it pertains to mechanics in D&D is on its surface a fallacy. Anyone that tells you different is just kind of feeding you into that fallacy. Whether you're looking at a specific character class, class race, multi-class combination, or certain quote-unquote powerful magic items, balance is not something that you have to be concerned about. As the DM, it's your active hand that creates the balance for your campaign. This is based on encounter building. Every min-maxed character out there has a flaw. If you have a fighter in the party that's buffed to such a high armor level that normally can't be hit by frontline NPCs, have a caster or two in the back that can pitch spells that require either saving throws, which the character is low on, or don't require hits or saving throws at all. Have a PC that can swing once or twice in a round for ludicrous amounts of damage? Add more minion NPCs to the front line to add that action economy. Minion NPCs, for those that don't know, are those NPCs that you have that are just kind of out there that only have one hit point, and they really die easily. Did you give the players a wand of fireballs that seems to come out at every fight? Have your enemies coming in from multiple different directions and often in one, two, three different ways. Each of these options, the players are still able to feel more important and unique. That frontline fighter is taking the brunt of the magical damage, but is acting as the party shield against those minions that can't hit them. That burst damage player is killing multiple creatures around, dashing them and getting that power fantasy that they were going for. And that wizard hopped up on bat guano and sulfur feels godlike as they help the party navigate the field, reducing waves of minions to ash, and the rest of their party is able to focus on that BBEG you've presented them. BBEG, for those that don't know, are your big bad evil guys. Oftentimes, this will need to be coupled with our second guideline. All of those enemy figures that were wiped out so quickly emerge a round or two later from another entrance, letting the players fire off those last few one charges eating into that action economy. But, foremost, allowing them to feel epic while increasing the dramatic tension of the moment-to-moment -moment combat. Fit. All in good fun. Our final guideline for this video is to remember that it's not you versus the players. It may feel like that sometimes, but it's really not. While the role of the DM often feels adversarial because of the nature of combat and goals within the game, remember a TPK does not create story. Combat is merely a means to reach the story goals. Providing your players with a challenge to overcome, note I said overcome, this is because you as the DM are narrating the hero's journey for your players. That is your true goal as a DM. You are the world's architect, the grand overseer that creates the epic adventure, the teller of stories. But without both the DM and the players working in conjunction, it's only half a story. These are by no means the end-all be-all of guidelines. Just a short snippet of where to start. Just like characters, there are a million different ways to DM. You just have to find the one that works best for you. And hopefully these tips and tricks and experience that I offer can help shape you to your own style of adventure. If you want to make sure to keep up to date with ways to improve your game session as DM, make sure to hit that subscribe button somewhere on this page, tag that notification bell, and uh, as so many other channels say, smash that thumbs up button. Thanks for watching, and remember, let's get creative. Yeah.